Sorry. And wait. Yeah. And action. All right. Ready to see. This is today. We're uh, these are these are the guys that are going to the Columbia trip this week coming up, and this is an orientation for the new people to understand uh, what to expect down there in Columbia. Okay. So this is this is my spiel. <laughs> so all right. So first of all, um, we're going to Cali, Columbia. You know, Andrew's been there before. He knows the whole thing. So I made arrangements with the hotel to pick us up at the airport. It's $30, uh, his name is Gustavo, and there's another gentleman, they're working together as a team because of a lot of people, and his name is Jonathan. And they're gonna meet you at the gate outside the airport. So when you, when you leave customs and immigration, you're gonna have all your stuff, and they're gonna come out, and, and, and one guy's gonna come up to you and, and say, hey, Hey, are you so and so? Or you know what I mean? Like um, they come up to me. Hey, are you Tom? Are you Andrew? And then and then you say yes. There's going to be some other guys out there, like taxi guys. Say, hey, I'll give you a ride, no problem. You know, no. You, you, they're, they're just trying to make money off it. Okay, just be aware of that. One guy, and what he's looking for is your paraglider badge. That's how he knows who you are. Okay. Doesn't know what you look like. Doesn't anything. It's not like I took a picture and gave it to him. Okay. So uh, when you get to the airport, you come outside. Gustavo's going to be there. He's going to have uh, a, 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 a um, SUV, or the other guy, Jonathan's going to have a big truck. Depends on how many people are coming in on the day you guys come in, right? So you have a little sign or something. Little sign. There. There. <laughs> no signs. <laughs> but uh, he'll know when he sees your power button. That's the only way he knows. Okay. Uh, some people come in late at night, you'll go directly to the hotel, get, get some sleep. The next day we go into town, we take care of business. We get, go into town, there's an ATM at the bank where you get your cash. You use a, you use a debit card, you slide it in, it will be the today rate. And the rates are awesome. So for example, um, the need to take a cash. It's acceptable. Uh, bring bring minimal amount of money, like cash, American cash, because down there it is very hard for them to transfer the cash into Colombian peso. That's what you're going to get, Colombian pesos. The rate this year is way better than last year. Okay, which is, I mean, it was really good last year. It, I mean, you're literally a millionaire down there with a hundred dollars, Andrew. Can, yeah. <laughs> I found whatever the most they let you take out one time from the, uh, the, the ATM was like enough to for the whole week. For the whole week. Really? So if you were, if, if I took out three hundred dollars worth, it was literally like millions of dollars of pesos, <laughs> and I barely used it all because everything everything was really minimal, you know. So <clears throat> take your ATM card or your credit card and put it in the card. Pin in there, pull out hundred dollars, hundred dollars at a time. It's all you really need. Okay. So it uh, withdraw dollars or the pesos? Which it's in pesos. They withdraw pesos. They'll come out automatically. They convert it automatically to converted to with today's rate, which is better than what you do here. So we had some guys last year with the PNC. He said, "I need Colombian pesos." They ordered it. They had to pay a bank fee for it, and whatever the rate was for that jet. Right, so the transfer rate. But down there, you just you, when you put it in the ATM, you get the rate. There is no charge. Like my bank didn't charge me. I had PNC. I didn't get charged for taking money out of the bank. So you have to check with your bank. It's very minimal. It's nothing. So if you're, if I'm just saying, there's fees. Some banks don't have fees. So just, just be aware of that. Okay. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. A hundred bucks for the week. It's all you're really going to need. And if you need more money, get another hundred dollars. So, 30 bucks to transfer, we need to pay uh, okay, that's cash? Next. Uh, yeah, so, okay, that, that comes next. The driver knows that you don't have any cash or peso, okay? The driver is the owner's husband. He's a young man. <coughs> he's, he's a doctor. He's becoming a doctor in school. He's a young guy. He knows. He's gonna to come to me. Hey, I didn't get the money from these guys from last night. <laughs> I, I give it to him. Or if, if he happens to remember you the next day, 
hey, do you have the money for the thing? And then you say, hey, $30, okay, which is 100, 100 mil, 100 mil, 100 million pesos. I got the conversion here, I'll show it to you later, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Once we get yourself to the hotel, they're gonna give you the key, and you're gonna to go to your room and just go to sleep because it's a long day. The next day you wake up, uh, we'll meet We'll meet at uh, like seven o'clock in the morning. You know, wake up when you wake up. They're gonna give you some coffee, tea, you know, see the beautiful view. We'll have a little meeting right at breakfast, okay? Right at breakfast, we'll go over what, what, how the day's gonna go out. I, I talk to the drivers, that we're gonna take us to the top of the mountain. They're gonna come every day at nine o'clock. So that gives you time to do a couple sled rides before the air starts to get kicking. And then then we'll get into that part of it next, right? So, all right, so um, <coughs> basically that's what, you, that's what you need to know as far as when you get there, okay? Once you get to the hotel, uh, I know some people are coming in 11.30 at night, like I'm coming in 11.30 at night. What time are you coming in? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. At night. Yeah, so we're all coming. I, I, yeah. Because I, I left, I, I work the day, I work in my day, and then after in the afternoon I'm going, I should be there at 11 30 or something like that. Okay? So um, I'm bringing my daughter with me. Um, so the first day, they're just going to hang out at the pool on Friday, right? My, my first day. Okay? I'm going to go paragliding. I got to get my dust off. You guys are coming on Saturday, right? Are you coming yeah, Saturday? Saturday, you come Saturday? Saturday. Okay, yeah. so my weekend is going to be with her, but in the, in the morning we'll be flying together. Okay, I, I want you to, we'll go over some strategies for you. We're going to take off, we're going to launch, and you'll see the LZ down below. We'll check out the LZ first and show you where all the wind socks are. There's telltales all over the road that shape, tells you where the wind is going. And, and it's a big field. I want you to land. Just the no fancy lean over stick, trying to pick a spot. I just want you to kind of set up and then land. Yeah. The reason why I want you to just land and not do anything like any kind of like spot landing is because you need to practice. You haven't practiced in months, right? You went on a trip, you haven't flown since last fall. So when you take off, go straight to the LZ. Just enjoy the air, get down, set up for a landing approach, and land in a, it's a big, big LZ. They got a guy there, and his name's Javier. He'll come over to you and ask you if you want your wing folded. It only costs a couple bucks, but it'll be the best folding you ever had. And you can just take all your stuff off, and he'll pack it for you, and you walk over across the street to the to the bar where the, where they're gonna bring your gear, okay? They'll put the gear right next to you, or right near, right, right near you, and then the trucks are gonna be there to load the truck. You just gotta get in line and get on one of those trucks to get back up. But you can have a soda, some drink of water, just to relax for a few minutes after the flight, and it's just gonna be a repetitive thing, okay? For the first couple days, okay? Uh, on Monday, uh, my daughter goes home first thing in the morning, and then game on. When you guys have enough flights and you want to learn how to thermal, tell us about the clinic, if you want to be part of it, it's 100 bucks a day. Here's what you expect, this is your expectations for that, is this. Um, we will do your first flight a little later when the thermal start kicking. I'll be on the radio with you, talking you into the thermal and how to stay in, okay? And then we'll get you up the cloud base. I did it last year with some of the people and they, and they were totally excited. Some people got a little scared and went out and landed because it's just too much system overload. But I can get you there if you want, right? And once you get up there, I'll try to keep you there and I'll work on the next guy. And we'll, and hopefully you get to a point where you stay up and you're organized and then if you fall out of it, I'll talk you back into it, right? Into the thermal, until you understand what's happening around you. you know, situational awareness, that's what you're gonna be learning about these thermals, okay? Usually the thermals there are like five to six hundred feet per minute thermals, which is like uh, 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 it's strong, but it's not going to keep the butt, right? It's later in the day, around three, four in the afternoon, like three o'clock, two, three o'clock in the afternoon, when you're out in the valley, and the thermals are really strong, and it makes you know your bump tolerance is a little low. And, oh my God, you just want to go land. Well, you're gonna have to get used to staying up because you're staying up. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes when you want to come down, you don't want to. You're not going to come down. 
because it's just so much abundance of lift. <laughs> That's what's so beautiful about plumbing, right? So, you know, we'll take our baby steps. Uh, I have a three day clinic that I'm gonna do with the feet. You can just do one or you can do two. If you feel like you have it by the second day, you don't have to do the third day. It's completely, this, this trip is, was designed to go paragliding and have fun. If you wanna learn, you come to me and say, all right, I wanna learn a little bit more. I got three days I want, uh, that I have to offer, and then the rest of it, it's, you know, I, I would like to go go for my record. I want to go past uh, Roll the Neo, and it was just like a 60, 65 mile cross country. It's my goal. That's what I want to do. That's my personal goal. You know? And maybe you guys can make it halfway there, or maybe all the way, and work together. Who knows? You never know how it goes, right? Depends on you and how much, uh, if, how much you uh, pick it up and how fast you pick it up. Once we get to that point, yeah, the sky's the limit. No pun intended. All right? GPS works in Colombia. What's that? GPS. It works in Colombia. What? GPS. Oh, the GPS works in Colombia. I don't know where I am. Okay, so. Navigation. What about navigation? Okay, global positioning sensors or system. They have, um, there's uh, satellites all over the world, right? So your computer has an antenna on there that picks, picks them out, pulls them in like this. And then there's calculations on there to, to, to crisscross them yeah. and says, oh, you're right here on a map. It works everywhere, okay? Um, United States is the first one that comes out with it. China came out with one, Russia came out with one, but we're, our system is connected to the United States system, right? So, so that uh, your GPS will work and the altitudes there, that's a great question. That was my next role right here. So the next thing we, uh, is, is that we are literally at 3,000 feet at the hotel. Right here, we're about like, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, two, three hundred feet at sea level, right? We're up 3,000 feet because Columbia is a, is, a, is a mountainous terrain. So we're 3,000 feet to start at, at, the, at the hotel, right? Our launch is 6,300 feet. Okay. We get up the altitudes up to 9,500 feet above, above sea level, right? But literally above the ground, it's only 6,000 feet. Like just like a blue mountain, it's about 6,000, 7,000 feet that we go above the sea level, right? So the altitudes in your in your barrio are going to be different from what you see around here. Like we see 1,300 feet at Blue Mountain, and then we get up to 6,000 feet. Uh, MSL mean sea level, right? There's above. There's two kinds of uh, there's two kinds of um, uh, altitudes above the ground and, and mean sea level. So everybody uses mean sea level as a as a uh, starting point. Now some people use the AGL to say, oh, I'm I'm 6,000 feet above the ground, you know, just to just to help. Tell people where they are, like kind of like up in the sky. So, but you'll you'll mostly use mean sea level. Yeah. So that's all on your all on your instrument. We'll go over that too. Okay. So you, you can cut that right there. And cut it. Yeah.